Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about ketogenic foods that our ancestors ate to get into ketosis. So I've seen multiple times now on uh, YouTube, in the comment section, some person or maybe multiple people, I don't know, are saying that our ancestors only got into ketosis by not eating, like during a fast. But uh, I disagree with that. And there were ketogenic foods back then, and I just used Chronometer, which is an app on the phone, and I put in a bunch of foods that would have existed 100,000 years ago to see if I could come up with some ketogenic foods. And sure enough, here's a bunch of animal parts and plants, and I got a second sheet here that I'll go through. And don't worry about trying to read these words. I'm going to say everything that's on here, so that way you can just sit back and relax. But... um. Now here we have on this column, we got tongue, which is a one-to-one -one ratio of fat versus protein plus carbs. So now when you watch my other videos, I talk about at the very least, you want to get a two-to-one ratio to get into ketosis. Now, if your body is fat adapted, meaning it very easily gets into ketosis, then a one-to-one -one ratio would be all it takes to get into ketosis. So I have one-to-one -one ratios and better for these foods right here. Brain and spinal cord are one to one. So they could be ketogenic if you had just gotten done fasting or um, if you are if your body's fat adapted. Okay, turkey tail. The tail of animals is, is ketogenic. So turkey tail is one to one. Wild boar tail is two to one. Beaver tail is four to one. The skin is two to one. So I certainly pick through uh, chicken and grabbed the skin and left the lean meat alone because the skin is so much more nourishing and our bodies certainly love the fat. Bone marrow is 11 to 1. It's super ketogenic. And this is part of the theory about our um, ancestral development of the brain. So imagine a lion kills a zebra and eats the, starts eating the organs and then the hyenas come in and chase the lion away. The hyena, hyena eat a lot of the organs and the muscle meat and the legs and stuff. And then later the turkey vultures come in, the vultures pick at the ligaments and the tendons and they clean the bones. And then our ancestors came through with opposable thumbs and they would pick up a rock and they would smash the skull and the long bones of that carcass and they ate the brain and the spinal cord and the marrow. And so eating all that fat fed our brains and that's part of the uh, theory about the evolution of this kind of a body the homo sapiens body so um some people think that we evolved from apes that's not true there was an ancestor a species five species earlier a common ancestor from uh, that from which came gorillas and independently orangutans and independently monkeys and chimpanzees and homo sapiens. So we didn't evolve from gorillas or orangutans or monkeys. We came from an ancestor before all those. Okay, so that's evolution. If you don't believe in evolution and rather you believe in creationism, I'm still with you. I still understand <laughs> where you're coming from too. Okay, so pemmican. What that is, it's buffalo fat from our Native Americans who would dry meat and maybe they'd put in cranberries and they would uh, flavor this fat. And they would walk around with this for three days while they hunted and they ate nothing but pemmican. So there's a company called uswellnessmeats.com and I bought their pemmican. This is years ago. And it kind of tastes like dog food a little bit. And I had it in the refrigerator. And it, I remember it was a Sunday night, like 10 o'clock. I was hungry. I didn't have any other food in the kitchen. And I ended up eating this pemmican with a spoon, kind of like you would eat ice cream right out of the tub. And then I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and I was so energized and warm um, that next morning. And for the rest of the day, it was, it's, it was quite phenomenal what uh, a high fat meal can really do for you. Okay, here are plants. Now nuts and seeds are ketogenic, not all of them. But you can use chronometer to find out what nuts and seeds are uh, ketogenic. So walnuts are 4 to 1. Macadamia nuts are 5 to 1. Olives are 12 to 1. Avocados are 4 to 1. 
I've seen some olives that are not ketogenic because they put various other food items in there. I've seen some olives that are like four to one, but I did find some that are 12 to one. Um, cashews are one to one, almonds are two to one, peanuts two to one, Brazil nuts four to one. So these are foods available all around the world. And then the coconut, raw fresh coconut meal is four to one. So our ancestors, no matter where, had access to some of these foods and they would eat these and get into ketosis without fasting. Okay, then we have animal fats. Just the fatty parts of animals were available. So tallow is the, used, the word used to describe the fat from beef or lamb. Lard is commonly the fat uh, that comes from pig. Schmaltz is the word that describes the fat from chicken or goose. And then we have this term offal, O-F-F-A-L. What, what this is, it's the, um, imagine a butcher cutting up meat and he's trying to you know, create a steak that's a certain uh, size and shape and he's cutting away various things. And whatever he cuts away, it falls off the butcher's block. So offal falls off the butcher's block. Take these two words, falls off, and flip them. Falls off, offal. So that's what that is. Now offal could be very high in protein, or it could be very high in fat, or it could be a mixture. But I just want to share that word with you, because our ancestors dealt with offal, and that included the omentum, which is the fat that's in the abdomen of the, of the animals that they hunted. Okay, there's also the fat on the back. Back fat. Imagine a deer or a moose. They got this big layer of brown fat that's on their back from their shoulders to their butt. It's a very metabolically active endocrine organ that part of that body keeps that animal warm in the cold winter. So back fat is a 31 to 1 ratio. So our, our ancestors would hunt, the, hunt these animals and eat the back fat. Okay, I found a nut. I just want to mention this. It's the Piley nut. I've never tasted it, but it's a 10 to 1 ratio. So that's the most ketogenic nut or seed that I've ever seen. Okay, and then cacao butter um, from the cacao tree. That's a pure fat, and the, this tree grows in all of Mexico all the way down to the southern part of Brazil. So our ancestors that came from there had easy access to cacao pods. Okay, now did our ancestors make oils? I don't know. Um, maybe they did, but it's a, it's a possibility. And then the last thing I want to mention is sweetbreads. So what does that mean? Sweetbreads is actually... Uh, pancreas and thymus gland, so it's the organs. Now, um, and I found this guy on YouTube, he's got a small channel, but he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, I think back in 2013. He also had a hemorrhage, but he's been doing a ketogenic diet. He's researching uh, ketosis. Um, he's done hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So I've been following him a little bit. And what he did was he took ketogenic uh, blood testing meters and he measured the ketogenicity of sweetbreads. So we got um, pancreas and thymus and then he tested steak and what I think he's doing is he's actually measuring blood but uh, you can see some of these numbers are quite high so the blood is ketogenic so when you eat liver and you're making liver at home you thaw the liver the blood settles to the bottom of the package and you put the liver on the um, on the pan don't forget to put the blood in there too and cook that up just a few minutes on each side with that liver and you got to eat that blood too. It's very, very helpful. So, and uh, some of the tribes of Africa would take an arrow and they would pierce through the neck of a cow just enough so that blood would come out and they'd catch it into a container and then they would drink it and they would pass it around. So drinking pure blood, raw, fresh blood, that was their form of uh, nutritious um, sacred food was was blood. Okay, and other tri other tribes throughout the world had their sacred foods. In Japan, it was fish, and Europe, it was uh, dairy. The Native Americans, it was heart, and quite commonly, liver was a sacred food all around the world. And a lot of that information I just told you came from Weston A. Price, a dentist who traveled the world in, in the 1930s uh, for 10 years, and he studied 134 indigenous tribes. Okay, so... There you go. That's my take on the ketogenic foods that our ancestors ate. Sh certainly they didn't have coconut oil. 
They didn't have butter. We're talking 100,000 years ago. They didn't have cottage cheese. Um, they didn't have modern foods, but they had a wide variety of other ketogenic foods that put them in ketosis. And they weren't just fasting to get into ketosis. They were eating foods, whether they knew it or not, they were getting into ketosis. All right, so if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe.